Well, what you see are painted toenails. I painted them with tincture of iodine, 7% from Humco. H-U-M-C-O, I don't know if they're still in business or what. Um, I know uh, veterinary supply for horses, you can, sometime, you can find maybe, maybe, um, iodine that is not the wrong kind. Um, it's pretty hard, you know, the people who push iodine or you know how regulated things are and uh, vested interests are highly competitive. It's hard to get natural remedies. Well, I learned about this natural remedy from um, Tullio Simoncini, a uh, oncologist in Rome, an Italian guy, and he figured out how to deal with internal cancer, most cases of internal cancer, except for brain tumors, but um, internal cancers by injecting um, a very strong solution of baking soda into the tumor, directly into the tumor. Not, <laughs> ingesting it through the mouth it, it won't work because it'll dissipate and diffuse and not reach the tumor to a strong enough degree to, to dissolve it. But with the help of a, uh, a catheter inserted into a vein, or an artery, I should say, that directly feeds the tumor, and then using a drip, an IV drip, um, the tumor can dissolve fairly rapidly. But then skin cancer, he spoke of tincture of iodine. Well, lo and behold, when I started to get skin cancer about um, 10 years ago, um, I tried it, and it worked. I burned off the cancer, it left no scar, and it was beautiful. And I've, it was a fast-growing skin cancer, the first one I had on my chest. You know, I don't mind, I don't, I don't look anymore for the possibility of getting one. You know, I don't stay out in the sun anymore like I used to. But if I get it, I'm not afraid to get it because I know how to deal with skin cancer very readily. Except if it should be on my spinal area on the back side, I can't reach it, you know. <laughs> it's a little hard. <laughs> I had uh, asked my ex-girlfriend one time to help me paint uh, a growth, and um, we got rid of it. Now, it won't work on a mole. For mold, you have to just ingest a little borax in your diet, some pure borax, and the, eventually the mole will dry up and fall off if you get to have any moles on your body. Anyway, so I, I got this email. Now, I got, gave you the premise, okay? So now, I f finally, to the good stuff. I got this email from my ex-girlfriend's mother who once in a while sends me stuff and once in a while I read them ah! and <laughs> I decided you know middle of the night I couldn't sleep or I wake up woke up early I decided to read it and it was all about a toenail fungus you know this guy was trying to sell something you know you know these things you get these people want to sell something and you got to watch the video all the way through and and um, so I thought, well, gee whiz, maybe I can do this myself. So I looked up on the internet and I found various um, natural remedies for toenail fungus. And I, um, the only one that looked anyway half decent was camphorated oil. You know, oil, essential oil of camphor. So I went on Amazon and it was just a few dollars and I didn't even have the money to pay for it. I'm so broke. So I thought, okay, what do I do? So I thought, hey, didn't I used to have Tiger Balm somewhere in my possession? Now, yeah, 10 years ago. Well, I couldn't find it now, <laughs> although I looked. But what I did find was a jar of 7% strength iodine tincture from Humco. Now, I think another brand name is Dervet, D-U-R-V-E-T. That's the one you find at a horse veterinary supply. They use it, you know, when... When if you get, if you're in charge of your horses and they give birth, then you have to use something to sterilize the umbilical cord of the newborn horse, and that's what you use. But nowadays they don't sell you this nice, pure, simple uh, re uh, formulation of iodine tincture anymore. They sell you this bizarre chemistry compound that's not as good, you know. But um, it's it's just a few ingredients because it dates back to the 1800s, the early 1800s when they first discovered iodine. They could extract it from seaweed by using alcohol. They you, you take 
uh, um, seaweed and you put it in a bath of alcohol, 100%, you know, vodka, ethyl, ethyl alcohol, and you let it sit in that, and you do several changes, and you can steep it and, and draw out the iodine. Um, and now you have your iodine in a base of alcohol because iodine does not dissolve in water very well. Um, we're talking the nascent iodine, not the um, the diatomic iodine, not the iodide, which is different. That's a salt of like, let's say, potassium iodide. That's something else. But nascent iodine does not dissolve in water very well. But if you can find it in, in this old formulation in which uh, one way it's made was a base of water, a little potassium iodide to help it stay stable in water, and then the iodine. And that's it. But it usually is a 2% solution of iodine, nascent iodine, and it the water doesn't uh, pr um, the water doesn't uh, <laughs> soak into the skin very well. I, I forget the word I want to use. Anyway, it doesn't, so the iodine cannot dr dry into the skin very well by comparison to alcohol. And it's only 2%. I want 7% and I want alcohol to uh, really get in there and get absorbed. So I used it on my toenails and now I'm like um, Oliver Heaviside, only instead of pink toenails, I now have brown toenails. And I'm telling you what effect it had is unbelievable. I know right away now that it wor it's working. And this is why, why I know. Because very quickly, I started getting stomach cramps. So I've been taking lots of calcium, and I'm still getting stomach cramps. That's a few hours later. Um, but the other thing that happened uh, very suddenly was my body temperature dropped very severely. And I had to go back to bed and put put a pile of co uh, covers, quilts over me, and a sleeping bag, plus a bathrobe and all kinds of clothing, just to try to warm up because I was freezing cold. And eventually I must have because I fell asleep and I had this weird dream of these ants, these gigantic ants with translucent orange bodies wanting to crawl, and they managed to crawl all over my body. Um, I think I was waiting outside. I had just seen a doctor or something, and uh, I don't know. So they, they they were curious about me and were walking towards me and started walking all over me and and um, they they were like two feet long ants they were huge, um, anywho <laughs> I don't know that's a pretty bizarre dream, but um, I got my body temperature back but I still have these cramps in my belly so I'm I'm taking calcium to settle my stomach down and a little potassium but mostly calcium, so that tells me that the alcohol level in my body dropped. See, I've had this condition for about 10 years. And it was when I was living in one of my mother's homes in which her master bedroom was infected with creosote. Creosote. It's a natural uh, varnish that comes from the creosote bush, or creosote bush. But if you look it up on, e on the EPA website, they say it should never be used inside the home. It's used on telephone poles to varnish, give a varnish to a telephone pole so it doesn't degrade too quickly in in the weather. But you know, eventually they have to replace the telephone pole anyway and put in a new one. But it's okay for outdoors because it's outgassing into the outside air. But it, you, you you're not allowed to use it inside your home. Well, for some uncanny reason, the prior owner's uh, brother-in-law who did the remodeling of the home put it. It got some wood, some floorboard, some plywood, plywood uh, floorboard wood for the floor of the master bedroom and then turned it upside down so that the varnish was facing in, facing up, into uh, to outgas into the master bedroom instead of into the crawl space underneath the bedroom, which, of course, has vents, right? Crawl space usually has vents to vent out to the surrounding air. Well, they could do it backwards. And within six months, she came down with a diagnosis of a toxic condition of her bloodstream from man-made chemicals. That was the first diagnosis, but there was no treatment modality in conventional medicine. Normally, you, what you do for alternative medicine, you go to a collating agent, a uh, collating doctor who gives you collation treatments to get the poisons out of your body. But she didn't do that. She didn't ask me, you know, 
could have told her, you know. It's so easy to look these things up nowadays on the internet. Well, lo and behold, she went for a second opinion, and they, uh, her second opinion doctor was Lou Gehrig's disease. And they put her on an experimental program. She got the water injection. She did not get the drug. So she ended up dying within the normal ma amount of time for Lou Gehrig's diagnosis, which is five years at her age. She was in her 70s. Well, I slept in that bedroom. I decided after a uh, year after she died, I decided to move into the bedroom because I was renting out. Uh, no, I can't remember if I was renting out other bedrooms in the in the house yet. But I sl decided to sleep in there, and within a very short period of time, with the c windows closed at night, I realized there was something wrong. Um, and that's when I pulled the carpet up and realized what was going on, because I could. My liver is not the greatest, you know, organ in the world. I was born with a bad liver, and um, it can't process things. For instance, I cannot use hemp products. You know, they say, oh, there's very little TCP or whatever they call it that's uh, in, you know, normally the active ingredient in hemp, you know, you know, marijuana, you know, hemp. You know, these uh, ground hemp seeds or something for protein source, alternative protein. Oh, uh, there's very little. It, it's, it's, it's legally acceptable. You're, 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 you can handle it. No, my liver cannot handle it. It shut it down. And that's what was happening when I slept in there. So I knew there was something in the air. And then after a while, I could smell it. But I didn't smell it right away. But when my liver sh shut down, then I knew there was something wrong. So I have a very sensitive liver. But ever since I lived in that house, and that was, I left that house, I lived in it for 16 years, but I left it about nine years ago. And ever since then, I've had a few health problems I've never had before. For instance, I have a lot of phlegm that I have to cough up at the end of a meal. Um, and it's hideous. It sounds horrible. I have to take so many capsules of cayenne pepper to clear my lungs. And I've had this foot fungus. I've had body fungus, actually, but it's worse. It starts in my pelvis and goes all the way down to my feet and has slowly but surely deteriorated my toenails. But I know it's in my body because one of my cats gave me a puncture wound on the back side of my hand, and it did not bleed. And at first, what happened, I looked at the puncture wound, and it was a clear wound, clear down to the tendons of my, you know, bone or tendons of the back of my hand. I could literally see, you know, <laughs> the in internal anatomy of my hand, because he made this puncture wound that did not bleed, but eventually it started to pus, but the pus was not amber. You know, normally, an normally the lymphatic fluid is literally the color of amber in the trees, and that's what tells uh, me that our nervous system, our physiology, is partly like that of a plant. The lymphatic system is just like the capillary uh, system of a plant, because the <laughs> we literally it, it even looks the same when we're healthy. But I had some spoiling potatoes in a bin in the kitchen at the time, and they were oozing out this white pussy fluid, and that's exactly what came out of my wound. Eventually, not right away, but it was a pussy, foamy. Um, gooey looking substance that was not clear yellow amber color at all. So I knew there was fungus in my body. That's what that wound taught me about myself, is that I have candida. I have a candida overgrowth situation. Now what does that mean? Well, lo and behold, candida is a new term because when I was growing up as a kid, nobody knew about it. And there was this guy who literally made the front page of the Los Angeles Times. Bottom of the front page, not the top, but it was an article he was pulled over for drunken driving. There he was given a breath test by the police and he was arrested. And he claimed he had no he had not had any alcohol that evening. This was at night that he was arrested for drunk driving. He said all he had was a dinner of pasta, no alcohol. And so they didn't have a name for such a condition at the time in which you ingest starch and you develop alcoholism, but now we know it's can candid candida, candida overgrowth. The yeast feeds on the carbs, and they also feed on ammonia. They get their nitrogen from ammonia, and they produce alcohol. 
And the ammonia comes from parasites. It does not come from the physiology. The medical establishment will tell you it comes from the physiology, and that's bogus. It comes from parasites in the physiology. And if you have a healthy liver, your liver will convert the ammonia into urea, and your kidneys will get rid of the urea. But when you don't have a healthy liver, such as that man probably did not have, and I certainly don't, then you're stuck with the ammonia recirculating in your bloodstream, feeding the the candida, the yeast, the effluent, the waste byproduct of the parasite. So we can go on a starvation diet of no carbohydrates, but who wants to do that? A high ketone diet? I don't want to do that. So I continue to eat starches, and I'm an alcoholic. And I don't like that condition. Well, this stuff is so penetrating, at 7% in particular, that it created a, uh, an immediate effect in my whole entire physiology. It dropped the alcohol level, so I started getting this weird, weird, mild sensation in my feet because they were waking up. They weren't deadened by the alcohol content anymore, and my body temperature dropped because I was no longer had uh, elevated levels of alcohol in my bloodstream. That you know, that's why people drink is to get, be warm, right? And, Mother Russia, you know, in cold Siberia, uh, vodka is king. <laughs> Even teenagers drink vodka at birthday parties w with their friends or with themselves, you know. They have vodka on the table along with the cake. I've seen videos, and I'm going, wow, teenagers are drinking vodka already in Russia. It's like, oh, my God. But, you know, how else do you keep warm in the wintertime? Well, they have healthy livers, so they can handle it, but I cannot. Half of me is Russian by birth, you know, on my mother's side, but I was born with a bad liver. That's a whole other story. So I can't handle this stuff, so I can't go near it, yet I create my own. And that's bad enough. I can't even handle that. So I knew that the alcohol level dropped when my body temperature dropped. Um, and so I knew right away this stuff is working. So I'm going to keep doing this. And I'm going to see if I can get rid of my nasty toenails and maybe get rid of some of my candida. You know, how else do you get rid of candida? I don't know. I've, you know, there are strong, powerful, psychotropic medications that are used for mental illness that are also used for parasites. It'll knock out the parasites and probably knock out the candida, but it'll also probably do something else to me that I don't want it to do. So I've never gone there. Um, and so I've been kind of clueless what to do. Uh, so I just figured i got to live with it. Well, here might be a way to get rid of candida from the body by getting rid of the one parasite that's hiding in my body that I haven't been able to get rid of. I, I take food-grade diatomaceous earth so I don't have any parasites in my gut, and I know I would have parasites in my gut if I did not take food-grade diatomaceous earth. So that helps. Um, but how do you get rid of parasites in other areas outside of the gut in other areas of the body because for instance I read somewhere that it's very easy for parasites to hide in the rib cage in the bone in the bony in the bony section of the rib cage because there's very little blood circulation there and so they can hide there so if you took medication for parasites they'd still you know <laughs> survive because there's very little blood flow going there anyway so and then they can come out and reinfect your body so how do you get rid of them you know well, iodine in a base of alcohol might just do the trick. And why, why not put it in that area of the body where I have it the worst? Because it's really the, 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 in the candida infecting the lymphatic fluid. It's all a question of gravity. It's pretty obvious. My head doesn't have the problem because I take all kinds of iodine supplements. You know, I take lots of iodine and seaweed to clear my head so that I can be smart and brilliant and come up with these free energy devices and understand how they work and the theory behind it. Um, but that only clears the top half of my body from, let's say, my belly button up. But from my belly button down, I'm, I'm loaded with candida and I don't know what to do about it. So I think this is a really important video because it's an important idea on how to deal with this thing that just might work. Put the iodine tincture where the candida is worse, at the bottom end of the body, and see what happens. That's about all I can say, huh? So this is the first day of treatment, so I can't tell you, you know, 
whether or not it works in so far as getting rid of my uh, rotten looking toenails but I can tell you it is working I can tell you right away it do it's doing something something valuable and something beneficial it's worth a try if you can <coughs> if you can find the stuff now I don't know if you can find it anymore it's regulated because they don't want us to have natural remedies so you won't find seven percent in the pharmacy years decades ago you could have but you could have found two percent but even that's hard to find in order to find two percent solution in a retail outlet in a city you have to go to to an ethnic i went to an a hispanic grocery store you know la has a lot of hispanic populations so i would go to the Hispanic grocery store because I could get good deals on their produce. It was a very good price. Well, I'd go up and down the aisles to see what else they've got, and they literally had 2% solution of iodine in a water base, um, you know, in Span with a Spanish label. So it told me it was probably manufactured maybe in Mexico or somewhere, certainly not in the United States unless it's some uh, Spanish-speaking company but they didn't mind because they use it so it's part of their culture but they've got the rest of us gringos so brainwashed and so delinquent in our the availability of natural remedies that we don't have the kind of stuff if we go looking for it we don't know where to look well you can or you could at least 10 years ago find it online and you could get five percent in an alcohol base or seven percent and either humco or dervit would be the two brands to look for but you don't want anything else because anything else is poison. Um, I made the mistake one time of trying to find uh, iodine in a base of isopropyl alcohol, and that is poison. You don't want isopropyl. You want it to be ethanol or vodka. You know, the trade name is vodka, but the chem chemical name, the common name for the chemical is ethanol. E T H A N O L. You know what? We sometimes can put in our car <laughs> what we used to be able to put in our car to drive our car when the car was first invented um, prohibition came about to stop farmers from making their own alcohol and so they'd have to buy gasoline for their cars because that's what the uh, gasoline engine was originally designed to burn was alcohol ethanol but it makes it's fr it's something our body can tolerate Not, or else people wouldn't be dr drinking vodka right but nobody drinks isopropyl alcohol, so why would I want to put it on my skin to be absorbed into my bloodstream? And because it will go into your bloodstream, um, and you don't want that. So um, I only get, I look at the label, and it has to say ethanol as the alcohol base for the iodines. That's imp very important. So I think I've given you all the information you need to know on this topic, and... Hopefully my toenails will get better. Already I've got a cure for candida. Partial. I don't want to say it's a total cure. That remains to be seen. But it is a partial uh, diminishment of my candida condition. So already that's a use for tincture of iodine right there. Paint your toenails and improve your candida condition. There you go.